Let's ultrasound. On today's edition, we're talking abdominal ultrasound and the aorta exam protocol. Let's talk measurements. It's important when measuring the aorta that the measurement is from the outer wall to the outer wall, and the outer wall is a bright hyperechoic line on the ultrasound. Remember that the aorta has a thick wall. The caliper should be placed outside of that bright wall, not on top of the wall or inside the wall in the anechoic spaces. For the aorta, we only measure the length when there's an aneurysm present, and generally aneurysms are classified as an AP or height dimension that's greater than or equal to three centimeters. When an aneurysm is present, then we measure the length and we measure the length of the aneurysm itself. And note that length is a horizontal measurement on the ultrasound image and that can be seen on this diagram as the red set of calibers. Note that this measurement must be placed parallel to the vessel walls. The height or the AP, which is the anterior posterior diameter is the most important measurement of the aorta and greater than or equal to three centimeters AP diameter is considered an aneurysm. Note that the height or AP measurement is a vertical measurement on the ultrasound image and the height or AP dimension is represented by the yellow calipers on this image. The first set of yellow calipers in the proximal aorta demonstrates a normal aorta measurement. When the aorta is of a normal caliber. And it's really important that the calipers are placed 90 degrees perpendicular to the lie of the aorta. When measuring an aneurysm, as shown more distally in this image, the calipers are also placed outer wall to outer wall, and that AP or height dimension is measured at its greatest diameter, 90 degrees perpendicular to the lie of the aorta itself. When moving into a transverse plane of the aorta, the width should be measured. And note that width is a horizontal horizontal measurement, not a vertical measurement. Width is demonstrated by the green calipers on this image. One of the most common mistakes made is that the height or AP dimension is measured twice, meaning that you end up with two vertical measurements and no horizontal measurements. For our aorta protocol, we're starting in the sagittal aorta in the proximal segment. And the proximal sagittal aorta runs from the diaphragm to the superior mesenteric artery, or the SMA. The images that you want to document are a sagittal proximal aorta without a measurement, a sagittal proximal aorta with an AP anterior posterior or height measurement, and this measurement needs to be outer wall to outer wall and 90 degrees perpendicular to the vessel eye at the largest diameter. And note that this is a vertical measurement on the ultrasound image. You also want to document a sagittal proximal aorta image with color Doppler and a normal measurement for the sagittal proximal aorta is two centimeters AP dimension. If it's greater than or equal to three centimeters, this is considered an aneurysm. And the most important step before collecting your aorta images is you want to carefully sweep through that sagittal proximal aorta medially to laterally to look for the presence of any dissections or aortic pathology. After documenting the sagittal aorta proximal, you want to move to the transverse plane of the aorta proximal. And remember that the transverse aorta proximal segment runs from the diaphragm to the superior mesenteric artery, or the SMA. You want to start first by sweeping through your transverse aorta, and you sweep through this by moving superiorly and inferiorly through the vessel, looking for the presence of any dissections or pathology. Next, you want to document your images and you want to take a transverse proximal aorta without a measurement and then a transverse proximal aorta with a width measurement and this should be measured outer wall to outer wall so pay attention to where that hyperechoic bright line is although that white hyperechoic wall of the aorta is often harder to visualize along the lateral edges of the aorta versus the anterior and posterior walls note that this measurement is horizontal on the ultrasound. Do not provide two height measurements. Height is a vertical measurement on the ultrasound. And
then you want to measure this width dimension at the largest diameter. You also want to take a transverse proximal aorta image with color Doppler, and you want to document all of these transverse proximal aorta images above the level of the celiac axis. So in the transverse plane, look for the ultrasound seagull sign, and then move more superiorly in the body. A note about the transverse aorta proximal segments, specifically the celiac axis. The proximal aorta runs from the diaphragm to the superior mesenteric artery. So technically, the celiac axis is within that proximal segment. However, it's best to measure the proximal section of the aorta more superiorly. So if you're transverse on the aorta and you see the seagull sign, you need to move more superiorly. And just to review, the seagull sign of the transverse aorta, we're going to see the transverse aorta, then we're going to see the body of the seagull, which is the celiac axis. Access, and then the wings of the seagull are going to be the common hepatic artery and the splenic artery. If you do see the seagull sign, it's okay to document an image of the seagull sign as you move inferiorly in that proximal segment. This is considered an optional image. However, when you do your measurements of the transverse aorta proximal, you should be more superior above that seagull sign. Now we're moving more distally into the sagittal aorta mid-segment. Start by sweeping your transducer medially and laterally all the way through the aorta looking for any dissections and pathology, and then start documenting your images. The sagittal aorta mid-segment runs from the superior mesenteric artery, the SMA, to the renal arteries. You want to document a sagittal mid-aorta image without measurement, and then a sagittal mid-aorta aorta with an AP or height measurement. And note that this is a vertical measurement on the ultrasound image. You want to measure outer wall to outer wall and 90 degrees perpendicular to the aorta. And you want to measure at the largest diameter. A common mistake for this segment is measuring too close to the SMA. You want to move down away from the SMA and measure between the SMA and the renal arteries. You also want to document a sagittal mid aorta image with color Doppler, and normal measurement for this segment is 2 centimeters in the AP dimension, and a measurement greater than or equal to 3 centimeters is considered an aneurysm. After documenting the sagittal aorta mid-segment, you want to move transversely, and the mid-segment runs from the superior mesenteric artery, the SMA, to the renal arteries. You want to start by sweeping in a transverse plane through your aorta, superiorly and inferiorly, to look for the presence of any dissections or pathology. And then you want to start documenting your images. First take a transverse mid-aorta without measurement, and then a transverse transverse aorta with a width measurement, and you want to measure outer wall to outer wall, and note that this measurement is a horizontal measurement on the ultrasound image. Do not provide two height measurements. Height would be a vertical measurement on the ultrasound, and you want to measure this at its largest diameter, and it's really important to exclude the renal arteries from this measurement. And you also want to take a transverse mid aorta with color Doppler, and you can see that there's several landmarks to help find the transverse aorta mid, you can look for the raccoon sign, which is the pancreas and the portal splenic confluence, and the SMA, which is the raccoon nose. Other landmarks in this transverse image are the IVC, and you may also see portions of the renal arteries and renal veins. The SMA will be one of your most recognizable landmarks as it will have hyperechoic fat below it on the ultrasound image. And we're moving more inferiorly to the sagittal aorta distal. The distal aorta runs from the renal arteries to the common iliac artery bifurcation. First, you want to sweep medially and laterally all the way through the aorta, looking for the presence of any dissections or pathology. Next, you want to take a sagittal distal aorta image without a measurement, and then a sagittal distal aorta with an AP or anterior posterior or height measurement, and you measure Measure this outer wall to outer wall 90 degrees perpendicular to the aorta, and you want to measure this at the largest diameter before the vessel begins to taper smaller and smaller just before the common iliac bifurcation. You also want to document a sagittal distal aorta image with color Doppler. A normal measurement for the distal sagittal aorta is 1.5 centimeters in the AP dimension. 
After documenting the sagittal aorta distal, it's time to move to the transverse plane. The transverse aorta distal runs from the renal arteries to the common iliac bifurcation. You want to start by sweeping superiorly and inferiorly in a transverse plane, looking for the presence of any dissections or pathology. And next, you want to document your images. You want to take a transverse distal aorta without measurements, a transverse distal aorta with a width measurement, and this should be measured outer wall to outer wall. Note that this measurement is horizontal on the ultrasound image. You don't want to provide two height measurements, and height is a vertical measurement on the ultrasound. And you want to measure this at its largest diameter. You also want to take a transverse distal aorta with color Doppler, and you want to ensure that these images are taken below the level of the renal arteries, but above the level of the common iliac bifurcation. And note that the aorta becomes more superficial as it travels distally in the body. So you'll also want to adjust your depth and focal zones and other ultrasound controls to compensate for the decreased amount of depth. Next up are the sagittal common iliac arteries, which can be abbreviated CIA. The aorta bifurcates into the right and left common iliac arteries, and the easiest way to find them is to move into a transverse plane and follow the distal aorta inferiorly until it bifurcates. You want to ensure that you start out by sweeping carefully through each common iliac artery, the right and the left, sweeping medially and laterally in a sagittal plane looking for the presence of any dissections or pathology. Next, you want to document your images, and you want to take a sagittal right common iliac without measurement, and a sagittal left common iliac without measurement, and then you want to take two sagittal images, one of the right and one of the left common iliac, with an AP or height measurement. Note that this is a vertical measurement on the ultrasound, but that the calipers must lay 90 degrees perpendicular to the vessel. You want to measure outer wall to outer wall at the largest diameter after they bifurcate. If you can see both arteries on the same image, you can document and measure both of them at the same time in the sagittal plane. If not, you'll have to image them one at a time. You also want to take a sagittal right and a sagittal left common iliac image with color Doppler, and normal measurement AP diameter of the common iliacs is going to be 0.8 to 1.0 centimeters in the AP or height dimension. Our last segment is our transverse common iliac arteries. The aorta bifurcates into the right and left common iliac arteries distally near the level of the umbilicus. Easiest way to find them is to find the distal aorta in a transverse plane and then move inferiorly until it bifurcates. And you'll notice that it splits off into two round to oval anechoic structures. And these are the right and left common iliac arteries. And they're going to be fairly superficial on the image, and you'll note the spine with posterior shadowing posterior to the iliac arteries. The first thing that you want to do is carefully sweep through each iliac artery in a transverse plane, superiorly and inferiorly looking for the presence of any dissections or pathology. And next you want to start documenting your images. You want to take a transverse common iliac image without measurements, and then you want to take a transverse common iliac image with width measurements. And you want this to be outer wall to outer wall. And note that this measurement is horizontal on the ultrasound image, but it's slightly oblique in order to obtain the greatest width. Be careful, however, not to provide two height measurements. Height is a vertical measurement on the ultrasound, and these measurements should still be a lot closer to a horizontal plane than a vertical. The right and left common iliac should be measured on the same transverse image. Do not take two separate images and measure them independently. And this image can simply be annotated transverse common iliac arteries or transverse aorta bifurcation. You also want to take a transverse common iliac artery image demonstrating color Doppler within both common iliac arteries. 